If you've never heard of advanced glycation end products, AGEs, I think you might because there's an accumulating body of evidence to suggest the production of these things is not so healthy for us. So in the next several minutes, I want to cover not only what advanced glycation end products are, but give you five actionable ways to lower your levels. Let's just jump right into it and see what we can discover. Number one, what are advanced glycation end products? Well, these are compounds that are created when sugar combines with either a protein or fats. And when it combines with proteins and fats, it alters their chemical structures. This in turn increases our production of free radicals, what is often called these days oxidative stress. And the increase in free radical production, you probably heard, is not so great for us. Uh, and, and one of the things it'll do is it'll increase cellular inflammation. Cellular inflammation, in turn, is linked to a variety of different health disorders. And so the overproduction of advanced glycation end products leads to overproduction of, of free radical production, increase of inflammation, which in turn is how these advanced glycation end products are linked to a variety of different diseases, including maybe even the aging process itself. I personally like to think that AGE, advanced glycation end products, that acronym was not chosen at random. I I think it's a direct reflection on the thinking of scientists that the overproduction of these compounds plays a role in the aging process. So when you see AGE, think aging, that's what I do. Okay, so this is a big overview of what advanced glycation and products are leaving out all the science. Having said that, how can we lower our production uh, of these compounds and our risk of various diseases in turn? Turns out there are some different ways. Number one, this is an excerpt of the study I'm about to show you in the next slide. I want you to know that advanced glycation end products are produced by the human body naturally. That's part of the deal we make with being alive. We make free radicals as because we're alive, we also make these things too. Now, it, AGEs are also present in foods. What foods have more advanced glycation end products? Foods that have a lot of fat and a lot of protein, especially those from animal origin. Okay, now, having said that, we can still increase the production even more by, again, preparing these foods at a higher temperature, such as frying and grilling and searing and stuff like that. Not only is that good, not only these foods have more AGEs to begin with, but also cooking at higher temperatures is going to drastically increase the production of advanced glycation end products. Also, anything that's got a lot of sugar and fat in it, processed foods, cakes, cookies, unfortunately, um, they have a lot of advanced glycation products too. So we're bombarded with a lot of these compounds in the diet. Okay, so having said that, what can we do to lower the risk? Number one, eat more fruits and veggies. So it stands to reason that uh, if foods have a lot of fat and protein of animal origin tend to have a lot of AEGs, it also tends to stand to reason that more fruits and veggies and whole grains and stuff tend to have less, and that's exactly what the research finds. So eating more fruits and veggies or throwing some fruits and veggies on the plate as you're having a cheeseburger or a steak or for instance, you know, hopefully is gonna help balance out things. So you know, eating more fruits and vegetables can't go wrong with that. The other thing I'd point out with this is that if cooking at higher temperatures is going to increase the production of advanced glycation end products, it also stands to reason that cooking at lower temperatures, more moist temperatures, moist heat as well, will reduce their production too. And that's actually true. So one of the safer ways to minimize uh, advanced glycation end product production is slow cooking. So again, if, if you are you know, using a crock pot, for instance, you're not getting any advanced glycation, advanced glycation end product production in your food. I like to tell myself that that as I make my semi-world famous uh, sweet potato turkey chili in the slow cooker. Um, if you want the recipe, email me and I'll be glad to send it to you. But again, cooking at lower temperatures like slow cooking is definitely one way to go. All right, so while I always put the emphasis on more, more fruits and veggies, you can't go wrong with that for a variety of different reasons. Are there any other ways to lower the production of advanced glycation end products? Yeah. So for instance, here's a dietary supplement uh, called it, it, it aged garlic extract. It's not garlic, it's an extract of garlic made by a company called Kyolic. And it has a variety of studies showing it has many health benefits, including reducing AGE formation. Um, this actual is an interesting study. It actually compared aged garlic extract to garlic and noted that the garlic extract reduced AGE formation by about 56% compared to about 33% for fresh garlic garlic extract. Um, it doesn't mean you don't use garlic. I, I throw it in my uh, turkey chili, slow cooker turkey chili myself, but I also have been known to put in uh, the aged garlic extract as well. 
Uh, people sometimes say to me, Joe, what supplements do you take? Um, this is one of them, actually. So um, I've been taking this for many years. I actually do like it. I'll put a link in the description so you can see the product that I actually take myself if you want to check it out. Number three is curcumin. Curcumin is an extract of the world-famous spice turmeric, and there are multiple studies showing that curcumin can reduce age, uh, excuse me, advanced glycation and product formation. Too many ages in this video. Um, again, I, I personally think turmeric would do a similar similar uh, thing than in curcumin because cur curcumin is in turmeric, but it, the thrust of the research is actually on curcumin and not turmeric, but um, I wouldn't be surprised if, if turmeric would have somewhat a similar uh, effect. Now, what I want to point out in this study is it does, this, this investigation does point out one of the interesting uh, shortcomings of the research, and that is the majority of the research is on test tube studies and lab animal studies, et cetera, not so much human trials, and that's probably because it's only comparatively recently we've discovered that advanced glycation end products are not so healthy for us. As we learn more, I'm sure these human research trials are, are going to be published. And when they are, I'll actually do an updated video on the human research. But that's the state of the uh, research as of right now. Okay, so that's curcumin. What else we got? Number four, we've got quercetin. Quercetin is a phytonutrient found in a variety of foods, such as onions and apples and grapes and blueberries. And again, like all plant nutrients, it has a variety of health-promoting effects, including reducing AGE formation by cells. Okay, so again, you you there are curcumin or excuse me, quercetin supplements out there. Um, again, you if you're eating foods like onions and stuff like that, uh, peanuts have got it too. Uh, you're getting quercetin. All right, and then number five is rounding out the top five in this video is drink more tea. Um, you've probably heard about the health promoting effects of an extract of green tea called EGCG, Epigallocechicin 3 Gallate, uh, which is very popular as a dietary supplement. Uh, it seems to have a variety of different effects in the body, including it does appear to be lowering the formation of advanced glycation end products. While that is intriguing, I will usually defer to the tea rather than an extract when it comes to um, EGCG. I do think the tea provides a much broader spectrum of benefits, including reducing AGE formation. This investigation looked at both green tea and black tea and found, no surprise there, both black tea and green tea could suppress advanced glycation and product production. But in addition to that, both teas maintained levels of free radical smashing enzymes such as superoxide dismutase, catalase, and glutathione peroxidase. Uh, again, that's, that's actually a very impressive thing. As we maintain these antioxidant enzymes a little bit better, we can help further neutralize the effects of oxidative stress in the human body, and this may play a role in various uh, disease reduction effects. Um, so when you hear about tea, you probably drink the tea, and I think drinking tea is great. Um, but if you think about it, tea is a plant, and I think it's probably one of the few plants we drink rather than eat. So why not take that tea bag, cut it open, and throw it in the blender with your smoothie? That's what I tend to do. Um, and then you're getting the full spectrum, and not just a you know just the watered down tea itself. You're getting the actual uh, whole food benefit of the tea. So I recommend doing that. Uh, that's something I do. Again, I throw it in my breakfast smoothie. I Again, I'll, I'll, if you email me, I'll send you my recipe. I put some interesting things in my smoothies. Most people don't. Uh, so that's number five of how, top five ways of how to neutralize uh, advanced glycation end products productions. If you have a comment or a question, leave them below, and I'll be happy to answer it myself. Until next time, guys, I'm Joe Cannon. Take care out there.